Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at the Linux distributions Manjaro and PC Linux OS. These have been recommended for review by regular viewers of this channel. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we are on the Manjaro website. Enjoy the simplicity as it says up there. And Manjaro is based upon Arch Linux, not upon say Ubuntu like many other distributions. And as you might have heard, Arch Linux can be rather difficult to install to get going. And therefore it's worth pointing out that's not the case with Manjaro. They've made an Arch Linux based distribution, which is very straightforward to install. This said, if we scroll down here, there's a great statement here, which I think sums up so much about this distribution. Here it is, look. It says, Manjaro is not a consumer-oriented operating system. You have full control and you will not be prevented from breaking your own installation, but then again, breaking things and fixing them is half of the fun. And 99% of me says, I really like this statement. I like the idea of an operating system in which I'm in full control. I can change everything, unlike saying Windows 10. But 1% of me says, this kind of statement is a bad idea because it really doesn't help Linux distributions to be accepted in the mainstream. Anyway, let's move back to the top. And if we want to download Manjaro, we go to try Manjaro here, where we discover there are lots of different editions like GNOME and KDE Plasma, but here we're going to be looking at the XFCE edition, based upon an XFCE desktop, which is a nice lightweight Linux desktop. And just before we look at that, it's worth pointing out there's also versions of Manjaro for ARM-based devices for single-board computers like the Cardass Vim 3, the Odroid N2, the Rock Pro 64, the Pinebook, even the Raspberry Pi 4. I must take a look at that in a future video. But for now, we'll stick with 64-bit x86-based computing. And to do that and look at Manjaro, all we have to do is to close down the browser because here we are in Manjaro. And it's a very nice looking distro, very nice, clean, crisp, very, very usable desktop. I just like the look and the feel of, of what we've got here. It's, a, it's just nice to use. Highly configurable. I've been able to go in and change things like the font sizes and the pointer size and the display frequency for recording without any problems at all. That isn't always the case in a Linux distribution. And it's also nice to see they've got this greater manual, which you can get from the website, although it's also here when you've installed. This is a fantastic piece of documentation, a user guide, which helps you to uh, initially uh, get hold of Manjaro. And then there's information about setting it up and using it. It's great to have this quality of a documentation. Let's just have a look at what we get pre-installed in the distro. Clearly you can install things yourself. There is an add remove software functionality here, a package manager there, but uh, let's show you what you get by default. Uh, in accessories there's various things. One of them, for example, is the HP device manager. So if you need to plug in an HP printer or scanner, you've got that there. It's great to see things like that in Linux. It's nice to see a, a mainstream big computing hardware manufacturer name HP sitting there in the menu. That shows a bit of attention to detail of real world computing. We've also got uh, uh, here under education, uh, LibreOffice Math, that's not very exciting, is it? Under games, we've got Steam there. So if you want to play Steam games, or at least some Steam games, they thought to include that in the distribution. Again, that's a nice real world thinking touch. Under graphics, we've got a GIMP is a pre-install. Let's just uh, launch GIMP. It's always good to launch GIMP, isn't it? And it defaults to single window mode, which gets it uh, lots and lots of uh, brownie points in, in my book any day. Anyway, let's go back to our menu here. We've got a, what else there? Not a lot else really on, under graphics. Internet, we've got pre-installed Thunderbird as your email client. We've got Firefox as a web browser, as we've seen. And we've got Microsoft Skype Online. I'll come back to that. Uh, we've got multimedia, we've got VLC Media Player is pre-installed. I'll skip over Office for a second. Oh, that takes us back to HP. And then we've got settings, lots and lots of really good settings. Uh, settings, settings, if you see what I mean, and under system, the usual kind of stuff. Or we can run HTOP for you. I know some of you love to see HTOP running. There it is, I've not changed the font size for you. It's still got a transparent background. Why do people like having transparent backgrounds ever on computing? I don't know, maybe it's just me. I find them an absolute pain, but I haven't turned it off there. Sorry about that. 
Anyway, I'm going to go back here to uh, Office. And Office here is very interesting because we've got pre-installed, as you would expect, LibreOffice Writer and Calc and all that kind of stuff. But down here, we've also got some uh, links in the menu to Microsoft Word Online, PowerPoint Online, Outlook Online, etc. OneNote Online. And this has led many people to say, oh, Microsoft Word is pre-installed in Manjaro. And it isn't. You can't run Microsoft Word in Linux. But what these are, are links to the online versions of Word and PowerPoint, etc. So if I click one of these, let's click on, say, PowerPoint, it will bring up a single window, uh, sort of effectively browser tab to take us to that Microsoft Online application. And the first time you do it, you have to enter your details. So I'll do that now and get us logged in. And uh, here we now are in the online version of PowerPoint, although sadly, I can't actually open any files or create new presentations here. Uh, but I think if I go to OneDrive, I should be able to make things happen. I still can't. Let me just uh, mess around for a second. And uh, here we are. I think this was a problem at the Microsoft end, but we're now running PowerPoint online in Manjaro. And I think it's a really nice feature having these direct Office Online links in the menu in this Linux distro. Right, here we now are on the website for a PC Linux OS, which is uh, sometimes referred to as PC LOS. And if I zoom up the uh, front there so we can see very clearly the strap line. The strap line claims the PC Linux OS distribution is so cool, ice cubes are jealous. And I wasn't quite sure about that claim, but I had a word with some of the occupants of my freezer, and apparently ice cubes do live in envy of this particular Linux distro. So this strap line is correct. So if we just zoom things down to a more normal size like that, it's worth noting that one of the things to note about PC Linux OS is it's not terribly resource heavy. So providing you've got at least 512 megabytes of RAM, preferably two gigabytes and a 64-bit processor, you should be able to run PC Linux OS. In terms of getting hold of it, there's a get PC Linux OS a download link here, and you'll see there's two possible desktops available, KDE and uh, Mate, or Mate, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I think officially it is Mate, and that's the one I've installed here. So if I close down the browser, here we are on the desktop for PC Linux OS. And it's just a very nice looking distro. As with a Manjaro earlier, it's very easy to configure. I managed to change various fonts and settings for recording. It's worked very well indeed. And I particularly like the trash can icon here. It's just a bit different to everybody else's trash can icon. Now, admittedly, I don't like the idea of a trash can on a computer in general, but if we've got to have one, we might as well have a nice icon. And I like the computer icon there as well. There's also, in terms of configuration, there's a nice facility down here. If we just bring it up with that sliders icon, this is a control center for uh, setting things up. So if I just put in my uh, password there, which is a nice short one just for this test install. This takes us in and we can control things as a super user. We can install and remove software. We can uh, set up various sharing. FTP can be configured. Web server can be configured. Network services can be set up there. Hardware can all be set up. We can browse our uh, hardware configuration, which is really handy. It'll just detect all our hardware. There we are, it's done that. So we could check, for example, the video card settings. You'll see it's picked up our GT1030 here, and it's picked up the right drivers as well on that. So it's very handy to have all this together in, a, in one place. And uh, we've also got various other network settings here, system settings, network sharing. It's a very, very handy control center, isn't it? Security and boot. So say, for example, we want to set up if we want to auto log on on boot, we've got a setting for that, which uh, isn't always as easy to get into and to, to change back and forth in other Linux distros. So let's get in, it's very, very handy. Let's just cancel out of that. And if we look in a help here, it's interesting to see, we can see the roots here of a PC Linux OS in a man driver, where the initial copyright for this uh, control center lies. So that's the control center, which I just happen to think is, is very nice. We look in terms of the, the menu, there's quite a lot of pre-installed software, a lot of very standard stuff, but a few bits and pieces worth pointing out. We've got links here to install a VirtualBox or on virtual machines, uh, various archiving tools, 
lots of configuration tools, a few development things, documentation bit there, editor, LibreOffice Math again in education, it always keeps coming up, file tools. There's a fantastic solitaire program, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, GIMP and things are sitting there in graphics. If I run up GIMP, it's got its own splash screen here in a PC Linux OS, which is uh, interesting. There we are, let's come out of the GIMP. Where were we in that menu? Uh, Internet, FileZilla for FTP, Firefox and Thunderbird are installed for the web and email. Standard Office software, no links to Office Online in this distro, we wouldn't expect them, it's just standard LibreOffice. Software Center for installing, sorting out your packages, that type of stuff. Various other LibreOffice math is coming back again. It's haunting this video all over the place. And uh, we've also under sound got Audacity. Uh, we've got VLC Media Player, Kodi installed, and a VLC and Kodi also there coming up under video. And then because we've got the Marte uh, desktop here, we can look at different places and we've got system settings over there. So this is a very nice uh, setup. And I think I'm going to finish off here just going through to uh, games and uh, Pi Sol, which is a fantastic version of Solitaire. There you are, it tells us about itself there, we will enjoy. And uh, I just like the way this is set up. Look at the way the cards turn. Isn't that nice? This is just a really nice version of Solitaire. This has been an important part of my testing using this program. So I'll just see if I can do this. And uh, here we are, coming back in my second game. I've done it. And. Uh, Look at that, we get cards spinning around the screen in this version of Solitaire. It was worth watching this video just to see this bit on the end. So uh, there we are, we've had a nice look at a PC Linux OS. Manjaro and PC Linux OS are both very solid distributions. I've been playing around with them for a few days now for this video and I've had no problems at all and they've both got some quite nice distinctive features. This said, personally I'm going to stick with Linux Mint as my go-to Linux distribution as my daily Linux driver but it's always wise to know about alternatives. If there are other Linux distributions you'd like to see covered on this channel please let us all know about them down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.